Well, it's a real pleasure to be here and to have a chance just to meet with you and talk about some of the problems that we're facing. Now, some of these problems are local, some are national, some are global, but they're all tied together. They're tied together with arithmetic, and the arithmetic isn't very difficult. And what I hope to do is I hope to be able to convince you that the greatest shortcoming of the human race is our inability to understand the exponential function. So you say, well, what's the exponential function? This is a mathematical function that you would write down if you're going to describe the size of anything that was growing steadily. If you had something growing 5% per year, you'd write the exponential function to show how large that growing quantity was year after year. And so we're talking about a situation where the time that's required for the growing quantity to increase by a fixed fraction is a constant. 5% per year, the 5% is a fixed fraction, the per year is a fixed length of time. Now that's what we want to talk about, it's ordinary steady growth. Well, if it takes a fixed length of time to grow 5%, it follows it takes a longer fixed length of time to grow 100%. Now that longer time is called a doubling time. We need to know how you calculate the doubling time, and it's easy. You just take the number 70, divide it by the percent growth per unit time, and that gives you the doubling time. So our example of 5% per year, you divide the 5 into 70, you find that growing quantity will double in size every 14 years. Well, you might ask, where did the 70 come from? The answer is it's approximately 100 multiplied by the natural logarithm of 2. If you wanted the time to triple, you'd use the natural logarithm of 3. So it's all very logical. But you don't have to remember where it came from if you'll just remember 70. Now, I wish we could get every person to make this mental calculation every time we see a percent growth rate of anything in a news story. For example, if you saw a story that said things have been growing 7% per year for several recent years, you wouldn't bat an eyelash. But when you see a headline that says crime has doubled in a decade, you say, my heavens, what's happening? Well, what is happening? 7% growth per year. Divide the 7 into 70, the doubling time is 10 years. But notice, if you're going to write a headline, you never write crime growing 7% per year because most people wouldn't know what it really means. Well, let's look at a generic graph of something that's growing steadily. After one doubling time, the growing quantity is up to twice its initial size. Two doubling times, it's up to four times its initial size. Then it goes to 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512. In just 10 doubling times, it's a thousand times larger than when it started. And you can see, if you tried to make a graph of that on ordinary graph paper, the graph will go right through the ceiling. Now let me give you an example to show the enormous numbers you get with just a modest number of doublings. Legend has it that the game of chess was invented by a mathematician who worked for a king. The king was very pleased. He said, I want to reward you. And the mathematician said, my needs are modest. Please take my new chess board and on the first square place one grain of wheat. On the next square double the one to make two. On the next square double the two to make four. Just keep doubling till you've doubled for every square. That will be an adequate payment. Well, we can guess the king thought this foolish man. I was ready to give him a real reward. All he asked for is just a few grains of wheat. Well, let's see what's involved in this. We note there are eight grains on the fourth square. Now, I can get this number eight by multiplying three twos together. It's two times two times two. It's one two less than the number of the square. Now, that follows in each case. So on the last square, I'd find the number of grains by multiplying 63 twos together. Now let's look at the way the totals build up. When we have one grain on the first square, the total on the board is one. We add two grains, that makes a total three. We put on four grains, now the total is seven. Seven is a grain less than eight. It's a grain less than three twos multiplied together. Fifteen is a grain less than four twos multiplied together. Well, that continues in each case. So when we're done, the total number of grains will be one grain less than the number I get multiplying 64 twos together. And my question is, how much wheat is that? You know, would that be a nice pile here in the studio? Would it fill the building? Would it cover the county to a depth of two meters? How much wheat are we talking about? The answer is it's roughly 400 times the 1990 worldwide harvest of wheat. Now that could be more wheat than humans have harvested in the entire history of the earth. And you say, how'd you get such a big number? 
It was simple. We just started with one grain, but we let the number grow steadily till it had doubled a mere 63 times. There's something else that's very important. The growth in any doubling time is greater than the total of all of the preceding growth. For example, when we put eight grains on the fourth square, the eight is larger than the total of seven that were already there. When we put 32 grains on the sixth square, the 32 is larger than the total of 31 that were already there. Every time the growing quantity doubles, it takes more than all that you'd used in all of the preceding growth. Now, let's translate that into the energy crisis. Here's an ad from the year 1975, and it asks the question, could America run out of electricity? America depends on electricity. Our need for electricity actually doubles every 10 or 12 years. That's an accurate reflection of a very long history of steady growth of the electric industry in this country, growth at a rate of around 7% per year, which goes with doubling every 10 years. Now, with all that history of growth, they expected the growth would just go on forever. Fortunately, it stopped. Not because anyone understood the arithmetic, it stopped for other reasons, but let's ask what if? Suppose the growth had continued, then we would see here the thing that we just saw on the chessboard. In the 10 years following the appearance of this ad, in that decade, the amount of electrical energy that we would have consumed in this country would have been greater than the total of all of the electrical energy we had ever consumed in the entire preceding history of the steady growth of that industry in this country. Now, did you realize that anything is completely acceptable as 7% growth per year could give such an incredible consequence that in just 10 years, you'd use more than the total of all that had been used in all of preceding history. Well, that's exactly what President Carter was referring to in his famous speech on energy. One of his statements was this. He said, and in each of those decades, more oil was consumed than in all of mankind's previous history. Now, by itself, that's a stunning statement. Now you can understand it. The president was telling us a simple consequence of the arithmetic of 7% growth each year in world oil consumption, and that was the historic figure up until the 1970s. Now there's another beautiful consequence of this arithmetic. If you take 70 years as a period of time, and note that that's roughly one human lifetime, then any percent growth continued steadily for 70 years gives you an overall increase by a factor that's very easy to calculate. For example, 4% per year, you find the factor by multiplying four twos together, it's a factor of 16. Let's look now at what happens when we have this kind of steady growth in a finite environment. Bacteria grow by doubling, and one bacterium divides to become two, the two divide to become four, the four become eight, 16, and so on. Suppose we had bacteria that doubled in number this way every minute. Suppose we put one of these bacteria in an empty bottle at 11 in the morning and then observe that the bottle's full at 12 noon. Now there's our case of just ordinary, steady growth. It has a doubling time of one minute. It's in the finite environment of one bottle. I want to ask you three questions. Number one, at what time was the bottle half full? Well, would you believe 11.59, one minute before 12, because they double in number every minute. And the second question, if you were an average bacterium in that bottle, at what time would you first realize that you were running out of space? Now think about this. This kind of steady growth is the centerpiece of the national economy and of the entire global economy. Think about it. Well, let's just look at the last minutes in the bottle. At 12 noon, it's full. One minute before, it's half full. Two minutes before, it's a quarter full. Then an eighth and a sixteenth. Let me ask you, at five minutes before 12, when the bottle's only 3% full and is 97% open space just yearning for development, how many of you would realize there was a problem? Now in the ongoing controversy over growth in Boulder, someone wrote to the newspaper some years ago and said, look, there isn't any problem with population growth in Boulder because the writer said, we have 15 times as much open space as we've already used. 
So let me ask you, what time was it in Boulder when the open space was 15 times the amount of space we'd already used? And the answer is it was four minutes before 12 in Boulder Valley. Well, suppose that at two minutes before 12, some of the bacteria realize that they're running out of space, so they launch a great search for new bottles. And they search offshore on the outer continental shelf and the overthrust belt and in the Arctic and they find three new bottles. Now that is a colossal discovery. That discovery is three times the amount of resource they ever knew about before. They now have four bottles. Before the discovery, there was only one. Now surely, this will give them a sustainable society, won't it? Well, you know what the third question is. How long can the growth continue as a result of this magnificent discovery? Well, let's look at the score. At 12 noon, one bottle's filled, there are three to go. 12.01, two bottles are filled, there are two to go. And at 12.02, all four are filled, and that's the end of the line. Now, you don't need any more arithmetic than this to evaluate the absolutely contradictory statements we've all heard and read from experts who tell us in one breath we can go on, increasing our rates of consumption of fossil fuels. In the next breath they say, but don't worry, we'll always be able to make the discoveries of new resources that we need to meet the requirements of that growth. Well, some years ago in Washington, our energy secretary observed that in the energy crisis, we have a classic case of exponential growth against a finite source. 